Have you got Calabatus mayflies hatching all around you? I think I got a great little pattern that'll help you out, help you catch some fish. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm Phil Rowley. On today's tying video, I'm going to introduce you to a variation of one of my favorite flies, the Cruncher. This is tied with a little Calabatus flavor in mine, and has really worked well when fish are up feeding on duns, or taking ascending nymphs as they come off the bottom and get up to the surface to hatch. It's a great fly to try on a midst tip or a floating line, long leader, slow hand twist retrieve, five turns maybe in a pause, five turns in a pause. It's simple to tie, so let me show you how I tie it. So let's tie the Calabatus Cruncher. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 1550 number 12. This is a standard wet fly hook. You could use a 1550, which is a, uh, a, a two extra heavy hook, but I like the lighter wire hook because I tend to fish this fly up in the water when fish are mid-depth to the surface feeding on emerging nymphs and duns. And uh, I want to keep this fly up where the fish are feeding. So I'm going to use some any colored thread will work. This happens to be gray uh, Textream ADOT. Uh, you could certainly use olive or tan. Um, you could even probably try a little hot spot color too, like uh, fluorescent orange, chartreuse, or even pink. So we're just going to lay a thread base down right to the halfway point between the, the uh, point and the crushed down barb. We're going to bring the thread forward to about the midpoint where we're going to tie in our tail material. So for the tail, we're going to use a Brahma hen uh, in olive. And we're going to use one of the larger feathers up at the top here for the tail. I pulled one off. And we're just going to come in here and clean up the feather by removing that soft flue. And I'm going to isolate a, a clump of uh, feathers that sort of, that I like, that's probably, I don't know, 20 fibers there. Again, don't count them, just get a kind of a gut feel that looks right. If anything, sparse is better than um, too heavy. So I'm just going to gather those tips together and I'm going to tie in a tail that is about the shank length long, sticking out the back. So I'm going to hold it up there and just with a, a couple of wraps. So I'm just going to hold those fibers along the side, keep my bobbin nice and short, a couple of wraps. That's got the fibers on there. And I can come in and just sort of look and go, okay, that's a, a pretty good tail length. If it's not, I can pull it to one side or the other and adjust the length from there. And then just secure these back down the shank on top, keeping a nice gathered tail like so. I'll go a little further. And that's moistened down. Just moisten my fingers to keep those in the control, see what they look like wet. And then all the way back up and just advance the tying thread forwards to about three quarters mark. And then we're going to come in and trim off those remnants and then cover them up. So we're going to tie in the ribbing next after the tail and we're going to start with a reinforcing rib of extra small silver wire. So the thread's still hanging at the base of the tail. We're going to take our wire, lay it along the near side, and we're going to secure it from the base of the tail up along the near side of the shank, the side closest to you on camera, and just secure that right the way up using our finger to help position it along the side right the way up the shank. And then once we're up here we're going to tie in the second rib, the attractor rib if you will, and that's some of the crinkle mirror flash. If you don't have access to this, you could certainly use Pearl Mylar, a Pearl Sulky, or Mirage Opal Mylar, or even a um, Pearlescent Crystal Flash. Anything you want to do just to add a little reflective shine to the fly. So we're going to offer that up right up where we finish winding that silver wire. And then we're just going to secure this down to the base of the tail. Let the thread hang there. For the body, we're going to use some Ozark turkey tail that's been dyed olive. It's uh, 
really got a nice subtle modeling when you wind this up. So we're just going to take a little slip from the stem, trim it there like so. I'm going to turn it over. This is the most prominently marked side of the feather. This is the dull side. So we're actually going to tie it in. We're going to take it and trim off the even up the tips and we're going to tie this in right at the base of the tail with that dull side facing up because when we put the first wrap in that's going to make that prominently marked darker side radiate out on the fly. So we're just bringing our tying thread up to about the three quarters point. We're going to add a little bit of uh, super glue here just to reinforce. Let that tack up a little bit. And the beauty of uh, the super glue is it adds a little durability, but also if you happen to slip your grip, um, there's a good chance that your body material won't unravel um, because it's been adhered to the, the shank. So we're just going to wind this up. And you see how those little fibers radiate out. I've got a nice looking natural mottled body that helps suggest the, the gills and the segmentation of the natural calabatus nymph. Just going to tie that off with a couple of wraps over top and a couple of wraps in front to lock it down. Trim away the excess. And then we're going to come forward first with our crinkle mirror flash rib. And we're going to counterwind this so it stands out a little better. And we're just going to start winding up the body. Nice even ribbing. Not really going for body segmentation. This is more to suggest the, um, the gases that the emerging nymphs use to both, like a coronamid, both to aid their ascent to the surface and final transformation to winged adults is when that nymphal, shuck, nymphal skin opens up. It kind of expels the, helps expel the dun into to our world and aid the transition process. We're going to leave that ribbing in place right now. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is tie in our thorax and we're just going to use some good old peacock curl. So I'm just going to take a single strand and you'll notice with peacock curl that the fibers are definitely aligned to one side more or less. It's always a side that seems to have more fibers to it. So I'm going to come in, trim away the, the brittle tip, I'm going to tie that in with those, the majority of the fibers are pointing down. Just get that tied in, secure this back onto the body, about uh, one third back from the hook eye, and then come back up. Let your thread hang up near the hook eye, and now when I when I put that half turn rotation in, now those nice fuzzy fi the the longer sided fiber longer fiber sided of the feather is going to radiate out. We're going to wind this up. Like so. Don't crowd the head. So if anything, stop a little shorter than you think you should. We're just going to wrap back onto that and then carefully trim off the excess. And now we're going to take our wire ribbing and wind that right over everything. So over the body, over that, over the um, crinkle mirror flash rib. This just adds a little bit of reinforcement. We want this fly to get chewed early and often and survive so we can fish one fly all day long and catch lots of fish and not waste time running out of flies or um, having to tie new flies on. So I've tied this off and I'll use my thumb and forefinger to break that right off and we're almost finished. For the hackle, I've taken another feather a little further down on the uh, cape and I want to choose one that has a fiber length about no longer than the body. If I can, I'm going to come in and prepare the hackle by stripping away sort of the shorter fibers at the base and the flue. And then I'm just going to tie this in wet fly style. So the convex side of the feather, or the most prominently marked side of the feather, is facing me right in front of the thorax. Just get that tied in place. Bring that tying thread right up to the hook eye. Trim that, have my hackle pliers handy, take a half turn positioning wrap with this feather, attach my hackle pliers to the tip, and wind this forward in front of the thorax and up to the tying thread, 
using my thumb and forefinger to sweep everything back. Just a couple of turns is all you need. I'm going to bring that up. A couple of wraps over the top. I'm not going to remove that tip section yet. I'm going to bring this up and use my thumb and forefinger and sweep everything back and start building my head. So I'm going to take my super glue at this point and I'm just going to coat that thread everything back out of the way and build up my head. So from the front of the, the right of the eye of the hook and walk back building a neat head like so. And then you pull down on the thread slightly and cross your fingers and cross your eyes and your toes and hope this works and just a sharp snap forward and that'll break off that feather nice and neat and then you can come in and finish the fly off with three to five turn whip finish disengage and your calabatus cruncher is done so this is a uh, an excellent pattern whenever you've got calabatus uh, hatching the nymphs are on the move it's a great searching pattern in the fall especially over the shallow shoals because this hackle is going to slow the sink rate of the fly and allow you to explore those, um, those shallow depths without hanging up on the bottom and there you go your calabatus cruncher make sure you have a few of these in your fly box next time calabatus are on the on the go